So today, everybody, we're going to talk about transistors. Who can raise their hand if they're using a transistor in one of their projects? At this stand. That's what I thought. For real? Well, here, I'll, I'll make it easy for you guys. Transistors are in almost any integrated circuit, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. So like, if you are using an Arduino, and Arduino's got loads of transistors in it. It's in the chip. It's all integrated in one. But today we're going to talk about how we can use them um, not as the big package in a chip, like on an Arduino microcontroller or anything like that. We're going to talk about a single transistor. So who knows? What a transistor does, or why people buy them. What's the point? Yeah. Uh, I feel like sort of like a valve type things, like where there's one. Uh, you could use something with less power to control something with more power. That's brilliant. You control. You use something with a small amount of power to control something that requires a lot of power. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. So what's what's an example of that? Anybody got any ideas? Like an amplifier. Amplifier. Perfect. Excellent example. I probably don't need to give this talk to you guys. Um, does anybody have another example? Yeah? You could use you know, the small amount of voltage that an Arduino outputs to control um, you know, power coming from a battery pack. Right. Power or something else. Right, right. Yeah, like a lot of those motor kits, like those motor shields, they use a lot of transistors. Right. Perfect. So that's, that's a really great example of why things happen. If you have a microcontroller, a microcontroller doesn't have that much strength behind it. It can't, it can't deliver much power. It's a small part. It's made for making decisions and running code, not really for doing things like um, running a motor or turning on a high brightness LED. Why else do people really like transistors? I'll give you, an, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's the same reason why people like most things. Yeah? So small and cheap. Small and cheap. People love it. You get those things for a few cents. Um, that's a good deal. So um, and you can also fit like 2 billion transistors into a chip this big. So like your Intel processor is running inside your computer right now. All that is is a bunch of transistors configured in a specific way that makes it run your computer. And they put like seriously 2 billion chips in a in a penny and four. So um, people really like what they are and how they work. All right, so what do they look like? Yeah? They're, um, they come in little black plastic cases with three pins. Yeah, so I'm going to pass this around. Um, this is one type. This is called TO92 package. There are other packages that you can find them in. This is just one example. Um, I'll show another a picture of another one on the screen in a minute. Um, so I'll show you in person, you can hold it, what it is. What do they look like on the screen? And that would be, oh, you're not have a black marker here. Um, uh, so we have what they look like on a schematic, right? Because you want to be able to draw them so you know what you're doing. So this, we'll do a long spot. You could change the color with the marker. That's okay, this is black. Um, make sure I'm getting the arrow right. So that is an NPN, no, that's an N channel MOSFET, I'm very sorry. So that's one example. There's another type of transistor which is called the, that you may see, which is an NPN. Got a little arrow going out. So this is an N-channel MOSFET. This is an NPN uh, BJT bipolar junction transistor. All right. So I drew it on the board, and this probably doesn't mean anything to any of you, right? What if we want to draw a schematic for an Arduino driving an LED? And I'll just do a simplified version. We have an Arduino, right? No big deal. And it's got some I.O. pins, so that's an input output pin. We'll set it as an output. 
and we want to drive an LED. So we're going to put um, plus some plus B, and draw the LED, the resistor. I'm going to make that Button. Now select as a cursor. Now just do it. You know. Nice. That's way better. Okay. Okay, so this is the eye open. Right? So we have some plus B, a dot, an LED. That's the symbol for an LED. Um, a resistor going to an Arduino pin. So if this Arduino pin goes high, if it's at 5 volts, will the LED light up? No. No ground. No ground, right. So you've got 5 volts here, you've got 5 volts here. So the voltage difference, remember from yesterday, is zero. So we go from 5 volts down to 5 volts. How many electrons are going to move? None. None. Perfect. All right, what if I make this zero volts? Yeah? No? What if I make it zero volts? What will happen? Anyone? Yeah. What in a lot of electrons want to go there since it goes from high to low. Right, so this is zero volts here, this is five volts up here. Electrons will want to flow, and the LED will light up. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys paid attention yesterday. So, what happens if this LED wants to consume an amp of current? What's going to happen? Do you think this Arduino can sink an amp of current, they can accept an amp of current. So if current's going to flow, it's going to have to flow into the Arduino, right? And if it wants an amp, do you think the Arduino can handle an amp? I think it can only handle 40 milliamps. Okay, so you know, you, you've got experience with them, and you're saying that it can only handle 40 milliamps. So this may burn the Arduino, which is bad news. Alright, so that's bad. Let's talk about how we can make it so it'll work. So if we have the Arduino and then let's hook up, we got another IO pin, right? And we've got, we're going to use the same LED, the same resistor, and our plus B. And we want to send one amp. Of current, damn, this thing's not. There it goes. Okay, one amp of current is what I want to put through it. Right? Um, so if we have one amp of current that we're trying to do, what can we use to make it so that the Arduino won't burn, but we still get to switch that thing with the Arduino? Yeah? Uh, equals I, IR? Right? That is true, but what part can I put here? Oh, uh, resistor. So I've already got a resistor. Anyone? I'll give you a hint. It's yeah. Transistor. Transistor. Perfect. So if we put a transistor here, then we can control this system with uh, the Arduino and not damage it. Forgive me, this thing's not quite calibrated. Okay. Transistor, right? So what's going to happen? How does this transistor work? Why is this going to work? So if we have this transistor here, you can think of it as a switch. Something that is going to make a connection and break a connection when you want to control it. 
So we've got this guy right here can either represent a switch that is open, right? That's what a switch that is open looks like, or a switch that is closed. You can do either of those things. Yeah? Which, what does it start at, open or closed? Um, it, what does it start at? Like, um, meaning, if, we're to, if, we're to, if I were to just put a transistor in and not, not have any programming run, program run on it, Arduino, right? Like, would it work at all? So, it, it would have to do something, right? It's got to do something. It's got to be in some state. Um, well, let's, let's make the question more broad and say, how can we control whether it's open or closed? Right? What do we do to make it so it's open or closed? And the answer is, you put a signal on this. So this is our, let's call this, now I'm going to name these things, um, source, drain, and gate. Right? And you can look these things up on Google all the time to figure out which, I can't remember which one's drain, which one's source, and which one's gate. And so the drain and the source are the two that are being connected and disconnected. Right? So it's like somebody sitting there and taking a wire and connecting these two, or disconnecting them. And the thing that makes a decision on if it'll be connected or disconnected is the gate. So if you put a signal on the gate, you can get the drain and the source to connect or disconnect. How do we do it? How do we put the signal on the gate to tr control it? And the answer is, you put a voltage here. And that's how you control a, a transistor, or at least an end channel. MOSFET. So you put a voltage here, and if the voltage is above a specific threshold, it'll make it connect. And if it's below a specific threshold, it'll leave it open. Right? And so that's a very simple way to think of transistors. So I want to give it voltage, it'll, it'll connect it. I want to take voltage away, it'll disconnect it. Okay. So let's get back to here. What do I have to do? So if I want to turn this on, I want this point connected to this point, correct? I want it to act like a wire. So what can I do to this gate to make it happen? You look like you got something to say. Right, you put a voltage on there. Sweet, so if I put a voltage, if I make this voltage go high, what's gonna happen to the drain and the source here? All the way back? Drain the source by add voltage here? Right. So it'll control it. So if I go from 0 to 5 volts here, it'll go from opening to closing it. Closing being connected, opening being not connected. Right? So 5 volts here means current flows here. Right? 0 volts means no current flows. Oh no, where's the undo button? Fred? Yeah, question back. I'm sorry? When there's a serial voltage on the other way, why isn't it going to flow? Why isn't it going to flow? Oh, so this is zero volts here? That is an awesome question. So if we've got zero volts sitting out here, why don't we have current flowing from here into the Arduino? Right? That is an awesome question. The reason is that this MOSFET isn't connected to either the drain or the source. Or the, the gate is not connected to the drain or the source. It sits there isolated from those two things. So these two wires right here, they connect and disconnect when they can see a voltage, but no current can flow that way. You can only see the voltage. You can't do anything. Yeah? What's the difference between the two different transistors if they have the same Oh, purpose? awesome question. What's the difference between the two different transistors? So this we talked about, the MOSFET goes and turns on when it sees a voltage above a specific level. So zero volts it's off, five volts it's off, right? This one, this NPN, this is called the base, um, and this is the emitter. So they have different names, that's the first thing, and this is the collector, right? So that's the first thing. First difference, different names. Um, they have analogous functions though, right? So in an NPN case, it's not a voltage that makes that happen. It's a current that makes that happen. 
So if you were to put like some current, let's say 10 milliamps into there, you would get this NPN transistor to turn on. Yeah? So what, uh, what's the name of MOSFET and transistor? Is that just like a name of a transistor? So MOSFET is a type of transistor. Is that the type that we're thinking about in the So yeah, this is a MOSFET. It stands for Metal Oxide Semiconducting Field Effect Transistor. Um, NPN refers to the type of semiconductor metal that's in there. So it's an NPN, and the full name is an NPN bipolar junction transistor. But uh, you can refer to this as just like an NPN, and you can refer to this as just a MOSFET engine. Right? So for this guy, I put a plus V here to turn it on. For this guy, I put a plus I here to turn it on. And that's the difference. OK? So the way this works on the NPN is there's a little diode here, and this is connected. Unlike the um, MOSFET, where the gate is not connected to the drain of source, the base is connected to the emitter with a diode. So there's a diode here that goes from the base to the emitter. The collector can never send current to the base. The collector can only send current down to the emitter. And it sends that current down when it sees current going into the base. Generally, it's easier to think of an MP, or a MOSFET because voltage is easier to think about and understand. Um, NPNs have their uses. They're cheaper. They're oftentimes faster. Um, so it's really, it's really up to the designer as to what transistor they will use. So um, those are the two things. Any other questions on how these things work and how you can use them? There's another type of transistor, it's P-channel, which is basically flipped, where instead of this being some voltage threshold, threshold above this point, if it's some voltage below this point up here, it'll turn on. But I'm not going to go too much into that. It's just a way to control it with it turning on when the voltage is low instead of high. But if you want to learn more about that, or if you're using P-channel or PNP transistors, we can talk about that if you're doing your, your project. Um, so what do you have to watch out for? How do you know what, what transistor is right for you? Right? Because I can tell you there's thousands of transistors available. You can go to DigiKey and by 8 a.m. tomorrow you could have any of a thousand shipped to you. No problem. So you look at the data sheet. That's, that's the key. Um, you can go to DigiKey, right? Or better yet, since we're in New York City, you go to Newark because they're closer and they'll ship you next day stuff for ground price. Anyways, you go to Newark and you can type transistor and the internet will go, it'll come up with all different types. So we have transistors BJT. And we have MOSFETs here. So you can click on MOSFETs, and you have 8,600 you can pick from. Kind of daunting, right? There's so much you can do. So I picked out this one that is decent. Um, probably wouldn't be very useful for you guys because of the threshold. But um, we'll go over some specs that you got to watch out for. So what do you think would be a problem with a transistor? What do you think something that would be ideal, that's really not ideal, which you gotta watch out for. Anybody know? Yeah? Um, if you have too much current, you can burn out. Right? So you wanna look at the current rating. So in this case, this guy's rated for a maximum of 30 amps. Now this is 30 amps only under some specific conditions, so you gotta read into the transistor and how things are working, uh, specifically how you handle heat, because if you put 30 amps through anything, it might get hot. Um, what's another? Specification that you got to worry about. So, uh, yeah. Max volts. Max volts. So, if you've got, you know, you remember we have this transistor here, right? If I put 10 volts from the drain to the source, most transistors should be able to handle that. But if I want to put 1,000 volts from the drain to the source, obviously you might have a risk of that being too much voltage. And remember, is there any perfect insulator? 
No. So eventually, if you give it enough voltage, electrons are going to go through there, and it's going to cook the transistor. So in this case, we've got this transistor it can handle 55 volts. Cool. Let's talk about another spec. So when this transistor turns on, this from drain to source acts like a what? It disconnects or connects. So if it's on, it acts like a switch. Like a switch that's turned on, right? So it's connected. So it'll act like a wire. That's what I was looking for. Wire. So we go drain to source. If the transistor's on, act like a wire, and it'll go right through. So there's something called RDS on, which is the resistance of the transistor. So this really acts like a resistor. But if you get a good one, it acts like a very, very low resistance resistor. So it acts closer to a wire than it might if it was a crappy one. So this one acts, the RDS on here is 0 0.035 ohms. So that's pretty small ohms. Right? OK. So um, I think that's all the specs I wanted to go through. Um, Oh, the gate threshold, of course. So how much voltage do you need in order on the gate here to turn this guy on? And that's called the gate threshold. So we look at the gate threshold. You've got to look through all these figures, and you might use these for different things. Here it is. Gate threshold. Boom. Gate threshold voltage is at least one and no more than two. So that's good. You're going, to get, you're going to get a gate threshold going that's going to work for you, most likely, in some application. Now, this whole document here is, how many pages is it? It's got all this information. It's eight pages long. So you'll probably need to look into some other things as your application for the transistor gets made more clear. But um, these are the basics that everybody should be looking for. Yeah? Uh, it's the gate threshold is a maximum of two volts. What's, uh, five volts the so the gate threshold is how much voltage you need to put here in order to get it to turn on. So I know if I give it two volts, it'll turn on, right? The, the uh, VDSS is how much voltage can I put here and turn off the transistor, and it won't go through. So like if you had 1,000 volts, it's going through. It doesn't care. If you had 100 volts, this is telling you anything over 55 volts, it's going through. But between 2 and 55, it's not. So the 2 volts, you can put 2 volts here, and it will turn this on. 0 volts here, and it'll turn it off. The 55 volts, it's saying you can put 55 volts here and still turn it off. But if you put 100 volts here, you couldn't turn it off. It's saying that's too much voltage, and it's going through. It doesn't care. Okay. So uh, no matter if you have this at 2 volts, 0 volts, it doesn't care. If you put 100 volts across here, it's going to go through and cook the transistor. So you can think of it as like insulations. How much voltage can I put across this piece of insulation? They're saying 55 volts. And then it breaks down. Any other questions? You guys all feel comfortable about using a transistor? Maybe. So again, this is another very broad generalization of transistors. If you look at your projects, if you're using your projects specifically, some higher power projects, I'm doing motor control, high power LEDs, or um, solar power, any of those high power systems, your transistor choice will be important. So we'll talk about it more. All right, cool, get back to building.